welcome back to a new episode of The Sims 4 of Broken Dreams. So, in the last 30 seconds of the last episode of Broken Dreams, we lost one of our Broken Dream family. The first time this has ever happened to me, one of my Sims ran away as a result of our actions in game. So, of course, Emma and Max got married in the last episode. And although we were very happy about it, I was very happy about it, they were very happy about it, there was one Sim that was not so happy about it. So, we're gonna go ahead and get straight back in to the Villarreal household so we can try and find my favorite Sim in the hall of the sim land my poor little baby Abel and see if we can bring him back home So guys here is the little house that people have been left in and as you can see People are not handing handling the disappearance of Abel very well at all in fact, everybody is pretty miserable. And as you guys probably know, when something like this happens, it's hard not to end up taking it out on your family. Which I think, unfortunately, is kind of happening a little bit. They're trying to talk things out, but everybody is so sad about Abel leaving. And a few of you guys were asking, kind of, why did Abel leave? Is it because he's, like, upset or confused about his sexuality? And, like, the idea of them being at a wedding was just too much for him? Guys, that is not what happened at all. What happened is, and I didn't realize this initially playing, and that was the whole point, because we were so kind of obsessive about, you know, the wedding going well and everything being great. I mean, look at these guys. The wedding going well, these guys having a lovely day, everybody looking so nice, and the day going off so lovely, that I don't think any of us really noticed that Abel was really, really struggling. These guys look like they're arguing about it with each other now as well. If you watch back at that video, Abel was really down the whole time and also Abel woke up feeling like really really sad and also in particular he woke up feeling guilty from his PTSD and it was actually the first time that I've seen like a moodler from his PTSD which was guilt so he kind of woke up that day feeling like really guilty and sad about things which we've never seen before and I initially thought he was feeling guilt about the whole um about elsa dying like it was somehow his fault but watching back i don't think that's what he's feeling guilty back about at all i think what abel was actually feeling really guilty about was the fact that everyone's lives were moving on emma and max were back together they were getting married again and as much as emma is a like a mother figure to him he was feeling so much guilt about that and about the fact that his mother has been left behind and she's gone and he's just not dealing with that well at all so he struggled for like the whole of the wedding and at one point in the wedding we actually saw him in the toilets trying to calm down in front of the mirror crying he also was crying for the whole ceremony like he just couldn't hold it together and I was ignoring it a little bit because I wanted the wedding to go so well. These guys were ignoring it as well. And maybe you guys watching at home were also kind of ignoring it too. Just because we were so focused on these two little bambinos here. But Abel, of course, could not ignore how down and how sad he was feeling. And it got to the point, of course, where he just couldn't handle it anymore. And he just had to leave. I think Lilith actually is feeling pretty angry about the whole thing which is kind of a classic Lilith reaction to be honest. So we saw Abel in the last episode kind of go in and looking in everybody's room maybe trying to like make himself talk to them one last time. Oh she's crying out you guys but he just couldn't bring himself to do it. He felt like there's this whole little family that he didn't really feel a part of. Like everybody was moving on from Elsa except him. And, oh, look at Vixie come zooming in. And he just couldn't handle it. He just literally couldn't handle it. He didn't feel good. He felt so much guilt about Elsa that he ended up just leaving the family and walking away. So as we know, little Emma Lorino has been trying to, like, ring her sisters, trying to get a little bit of a help from everybody. But nobody is able to help. Everyone's got their own busy lives going on. And I don't think she's actually outright told anybody yet either. She is probably feeling a lot of guilt about it as well because she is, like, the woman that's come back into Max's life. And she's probably feeling like she's caused Abel to run away. She's not done anything wrong, really. She's always been there for Abel. But I think as a family in general, they haven't supported him as much as they should have done. And I can actually hear little Max crying away in his sleep. Abel is his son like he looks the absolute spit of him as well and he's probably feeling so bad that like his son from his first marriage he's just not been there for you guys he has not been the kind of father that we know he can be so basically everybody's been having a really sad time of it Abel struggled with his PTSD so much and his guilt and he ended up running away and leaving home so in this episode I think our little family arenas are gonna have to try 
and find little Abel. I'll we'll wake up tomorrow morning and we'll do everything in our power to bring him back home. <laughs> and of course, you have to remember that Abel is more or less like, he's a teenager, but he's almost an adult. Like he's like 16, 17. If you call the police and say a kid that age has like, you know, had enough and run away and left home, They'll probably just kind of like, you know, give it a few days. Like, he's almost an adult. He can really do what he wants anyway, because he's older than 16, so he's allowed to leave home. So, you know, they're not going to be that much help until they think something serious has happened. So the poor Villarreal's are just kind of left to sort it out themselves. And I think poor little Lilith of everybody is taking it really hard. She was meant to be the big sister that was there for him. But her being there for him is her way of like, it works with her problems, which are like teenage angsty problems, you know, go out, drink meet a guy like Jamie Street and and like you know use him to help with your sadness but it's not gonna work for somebody like Abel who has like much much deeper issues that that sort of nonsense is just not gonna help with and I think I can hear her crying in her sleep too oh guys even little Lily Bear is having a sad little cry for herself in her sleep it's so sad Sad! So sad! I miss Abel! So Max has woken up with the focus move from his genius trait. He's thinking today is the day that we bring home little Abel Arino. He's also cooked a little bit of breakfast for everyone too. Emma, however, has woken up just feeling pretty rubbish. Pretty rubbishy yet again. She's still looking really, really down, you guys. And I think if we're not careful, this could... <laughs> have a really negative impact on their relationship, but they do seem to be at least trying to not take it out on each other too much. Could be very, very easy for Max to blame Emma for, you know, coming in and trying to like take Elsa's place or for Emma to blame Max for not realizing, you know, what his son's going through. But at least they're not doing that, you guys. And look at this, cause this will definitely be a first. Lilith is watching the news. When did you ever, ever think that was gonna occur? Lilith is literally sat watching the news to try and see if there's anything about Abel on there at all. Like any sort of news that could be related to Abel, but so far there is absolutely nothing. And look at this poor sad Villarreal family, you guys. So I think what's gonna happen today is these guys are gonna call, keep calling everybody they know Keep calling the police and basically see if anybody else at all can help. Because at the end of the day, somebody needs to stay at the house just in case Abel comes home. Vixie, I can hear glittering away somewhere. Where is she? She has picked the worst time in the whole world to become ill. Because it's a time when nobody can really afford to be going to the vets, Vixie. You're not helping out here. Little Emma has so many, like, sisters and relatives that she can ring. And just see if anybody has seen Abel at all. It's not looking good so far, you guys. I think Max is on the phone to police trying to sort that stuff out. And Emma is ringing all the family members again. Just to see if anybody at all has seen Abel. For little Lilith, I think while these guys are staying at home, waiting to see if he comes back, somebody should go out looking for him. And Lilith has had a little bit of an idea about where he could be. So we're gonna go and follow, follow Lilith and see if she's on to the right lines. So Lilith's idea was that if that was her and she had run away from home and it was about Elsa, then I think the place that he would go back to is his childhood home. That actually has another family living there. These guys here now live there. But if you guys remember, Elsa died on that lot. Like, she died at the home. And she is actually buried at the home too. So I think... I think Lilith could be onto something here, you guys. Let's go and see if there's any evidence there at all that Abel was once there. So, do you guys remember this house? This is literally the house that Lilith lived in for a while, but also the house that Abel grew up in and where the fire was. And you can literally see evidence from the fire across the whole of the floor. Like, it's all charred everywhere. And also, look at this. There's a whole new family living there at the moment. Oh, look, Connor's in the background there. Connor as well, who's meant to be Abel's best friend, meant to have been looking out after Abel. But because of his lifetime whole achievement thing of trying to do this whole, you know, cheeky lover kind of trait thing, he's been so focused on girls that he's had literally no time at all to think about Abel. There's a lot of people in this game that probably should have tried a little bit harder, you know? So, although there's a new family moved in here, if you guys remember- these guys here. If you guys remember, Elsa died on this lot. She literally died in there, in that kitchen, right there, on this lot. And so we also buried it in the garden. Now, I don't think anybody has actually been to a grave since they've moved out of this house. 
So I think it's pretty smart of uh, Lilith to come look here because we'll probably be able to tell straight away if Abel has been here, which guys, I think we 100% can do because look at this. Somebody has clearly been to this grave. There are cards there. There's like flowers and stuff there. And this is Elsa's grave. Look here, Elsa Villarreal. And actually, Lilith has the option to destroy the grave because Elsa and Lilith definitely didn't get on so well. So this is a good sign in a way because it does mean that little, um, little Abel has left the neighborhood. He's been through this neighborhood, so he's clearly on his way somewhere and he's going somewhere. But he has paid respects to Elsa's grave along the way. This child just running by, you know, not paying her respects. And I think it's kind of sad as well that if he did come to this house, he probably, like, because the grave is right here, he will have been able to look through this window and see, like, there's a new family in this house. A new happy family literally in the house that little Elsa died in with a little dog. And the whole, like, the kitchen that she literally died in is right here. I mean, they ain't taking care of their house so well. But it must be pretty hard to come back and see there's a family in there that have moved on. At a place where something so traumatic happened to you. So I am gonna go ahead and send this poor little sad pookie home. She's down because I think everybody's realizing how much they failed Abel. But at least we have some kind of a clue. We know he's alive. We know he's left our neighborhood and he's gone to another neighborhood. He's clearly heading somewhere because he's on the move. We just have to figure out where. Oh my gosh, I've literally got home. Max is crying it out down here in Lilith's bed. Although it has made him feel a little bit happier. And then poor little Emma is in here crying it out in this bed. Basically, the family is not dealing with the loss of Abel well at all. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and make sure that Emily, uh, Emma, sorry, calls in sick from work. Cause I don't think today is a good day to go into work, you know? Oh my gosh, as well. Literally, how typical is this? The family's going through turmoil and Jamie Street rings Lilith saying he can't get her out of his mind lately. Wanna go and get a date and get some lunch at the Chez Llama. Today of all days, Jamie, I'm gonna say no. You know, guys know I have a little bit of a soft spot for Jamie. You know, you can kind of see the resemblance with Abel. Clearly, I have a type, you guys. But regardless, irregardless, we are not going for a Jamie Street lunch date when Abel is out there somewhere all on his own, maybe even in danger. No. I mean, she does not look like she wants to go on a date right now. She looks dazed, confused, and kind of a little bit crazy, if I'm being honest. So basically, our poor, sad little family, they're trying to come for each other, they're trying to make each other feel better, but everybody is feeling pretty sad, and Lilith is letting people know that she has at least gone to the grave and seen that there's stuff at the grave site. So, you know, Abel's still alive, he's somewhere, but I don't know if that's necessarily, you know, great news, the fact that... It's clear, and I think Max is starting to realize it's clear. Everybody's kind of failed Abel a little bit, you guys. Oh, look at poor Lily Bear. The sadness just breaks my heart, you guys. I thought that was him running out in the street there for a minute. I actually think it's a girl. So one thing that I am gonna go and do is call a group gathering to see if anybody can come around and help. Maybe once we've got some of this group around to come and help us, we can all get the whole calorie aching clan trying their best to now. find little Ableykins. Oh gosh. I think uh, Lilith just had a little bit of a go at Emma there, you guys. Don't blame each other. Don't blame each other for this because it's all gonna end in tears. Look at this. We've got the whole family coming around here. Everybody is gonna come and we're gonna figure out a way to get little Ablerito home. Oh, I was like, where's Lilith? She's not joining in with everyone downstairs. She's crying it out literally in Abel's room. She's literally in Abel's room right now, seriously struggling with not having her brother. And she's come downstairs now to chat a little bit with Connor. Connor, who's obviously kind of meant to be like Abel's good friend. So if anyone might have a little bit- Oh my god, this room is so packed. Way too packed full of Sims. If anybody might have a little bit of an idea, it could be him. So she's having a little chat with him and seeing if he knows anything at all. You don't thought if anyone's gonna be quite down and sad about the whole thing as well. It is- look at Salma cleaning for them. Cleaning for them! You don't thought if anyone's gonna be feeling pretty sad and down about things, it's probably gonna be little Connor I think Connor's told her that Abel was getting pretty close with yeah, Erica, so that. maybe Erica knows something. Right? So we've got little Connor to go ahead and call Erica, ask her to come around to the house and see if she can help. Er wait, wait, where are you going? So Erica has come over to try and help out. 
Erica, who was obviously pretty close to Abel, and Abel invited home a few times, who's also looking a little bit sad about the whole thing as well. Erica might not have known that Abel was gone at this point because they weren't really talking because Abel pulled away because of the whole Connor situation. There's been so many like cross looses and ties and stuff. But Lilith's invited her over now and told her what has happened and just asked her if she has any idea where Abel might be. Erica actually doesn't and she's just about to go off on a camping trip with her parents as well. So I don't know how much help she can really be. But she at least tells poor sad little Lilith that she's going to keep her eyes peeled and see if she can try and find Abel as well. However, I don't really think this is the news that little Lily Bear wanted to hear because she's gone straight upstairs back into Abel's room to try and cry it out again. Oh my gosh, you guys. So we now know that things are not so great in this house and that people are definitely feeling very down. And everybody is very much missing having a little Abel Rooney at home with them and sort of realizing all the things that they did wrong and probably should have done a little bit differently if they wanted Abel to stay. But now I think it's time. Hello, Vixie. Hello. <laughs> now I think it's time that we leave the Calorie. Uh, sorry, if we leave the Villa Reals, the Calorie Akins are all out looking for them. And so is Erica. Connor, who probably should definitely have done a little bit more. I'm not blaming you, Connor. There's a lot of people that have, you know, a slight bit of responsibility here, and I think you're definitely one of them. But I think now we need to go to Abel, see wh just where he is, and just what can be done about the Abel situation, you guys. So, you guys, Abel definitely did leave the neighborhood. In fact, he ran very, very far away. He actually ran to a place where he could definitely let his head kind of recoup and recover. And where better to do that than in the beautiful, beautiful wilderness. And it looks like he set himself up a little bit of a home. A little bit of a place just to go and kind of clear his head. I don't know what kind of state he's going to be in though. Because I imagine he's still going to be pretty sad. But he's already gone and visited his mum's grave. And at least tried to make some kind of a peace as to what happened there. And now he's gone to the one place that I actually think would be a really, really good place just to go and... Sort of find yourself again and figure out exactly what went wrong and see if you can get like the the kind of energy and spirit to go back home to the things that made you kind of sad, I guess. So here he is, you guys. Little Abel is alive at oh okay. Bye, Abel. He's reading the wilderness digest, you guys. Literally sat in there reading the wilderness digest, refusing to come out and say hello to us. I'm gonna place him a little fire there so at least he can try and make himself some breakfast. Although here. You're probably gonna have to try and catch it for yourself, Abel. Abel Arino, can we see you please? There we go. And now he's been surrounded by little midges too. But as you can see, Abel is sad and down, but he is alive and well, you guys. And it seems like he's been living out here for a couple of days. Needing the toilet, waking up from his little tent. I mean, they, those boots, I guess might be okay for camping, but you may be looking a little bit too stylish for this sort of, uh, sort of life, if you get me. <gasps> and oh my gosh, what are they over there? Ah, there's like ants coming over to Abel. You're braver than I am. But Abel has been out here living in the wilderness in his little tent with his readiness digest, a wilderness digest, keeping him entertained. He also can go and wash and bathe and stuff in this little area here. And I guess he's just paying something like, I don't know, $15, $30 a night. Probably even what little money does he does have saved just to kind of hang out here and find himself again a little bit, you guys, because the poor little baby is not in the greatest... Where's he gone? He's getting to this toilet very slowly. I think he might miss it if he's not careful. But he's not in the greatest shape. He's still definitely feeling very, very down about everything that happened. You may as well get a shower while you're there, Abel. And then you're gonna have to catch yourself breakfast. That's, that's just the way things work here. There is a little stream here. So why don't you pop on down here? Go fishing and try and catch yourself a little fish for breakfast. Oh my gosh, as if it wasn't gross enough already, covered in flies. You've got Egypts like this, jumping up and down in trash. And laughing manically to themselves. So here is poor little Abel, you guys. Look at his poor, sad, bed vacant, still, <laughs> little face. He has been living out here, 
Trish trying to get over the whole situation. <gasps> and look, that really pale spook girl is here as well. <laughs> she's the one that we see around every now and again that sort of looks a little bit vampirish. Apparently she's camping too. Looking very, very pale for herself and like she might not quite make the toilet. But I do think being out here, kind of getting back in touch with like nature and with the wilderness could be a pretty nice way for Abel to just sort of help him get over things a little bit and maybe try and help him get a little bit of a, oh wow, now he looks just angry, you guys. He's tense. Oh, he's been triggered by something. Something as he's seen has set off his PTSD, you guys. And he's thinking about his dad. Bless him, you guys. He is thinking about home. Abel, you're gonna have to try and catch yourself some breakfast. He was about to do a little cloud gaze for himself there. Nope, guys, he is not gonna do a fish. He instead wants to try and calm down his tenseness with a little bit of cloud gazing. Bless you, you poor little triggered beautiful angel, you. Look at Abel, you guys. This is why he's my favorite character. Just look at him. He's so cute. I know, but this is exactly what I was doing wrong last episode. Focusing on how cute and lovely he is instead of focusing on the fact that, you know, he is a person with very real problems and problems that we need to try and help work through, you guys. Although it says he's cloud gazing, the sky is cloudless. <laughs> the thing is, he's going to get hungry pretty quickly because he's literally too tense right now to even try and fish, which is not great if you're trying to live out in the wilderness by yourself. The intentions are there for this place, but the mindset and like physical capability, it potentially isn't for poor Abel. Oh man, he's now on edge from his PTSD. Your sim feels like there's something wrong, but they don't know what. Is it the fact that you may starve of, of hunger soon if you're not careful, Abel? Maybe it is, try and fish again. Oh no, now he's unbearable from ne being near a bear. I can't see the bear. Oh guys, he's not gonna be able to fish. Okay. Oh, there's the bear. Okay, plan- and now he's dazed! He's hallucinating from his PTSD. This is as why, as great as it is, that he's heading out there on his own. He's not an ideal candidate for being in the wilderness by himself, you guys. Like, look, he is actually fishing now, but look at his face. He's clearly not really with it. Like, literally not with it at all. Abel, you need to call somebody! You need to call somebody and get some help! You can't be out here on your own. Looks like the fish in this area are too crafty for Abel. Oh my gosh, let's head down to the front. Can you fish where these houses are here? Maybe there's like an easier spot somewhere. How about here? This looks a little bit easier. It's not running water at least. And I mean, it's so pretty here that you can kind of imagine it as a nice place to try and get over something as traumatic as little Abel's been through. <gasps> Guys, he did it! He caught himself a 0 0.1 kilogram minnow. I mean, it's gonna be a pretty small breakfast, Abel, but it's all you can have right now, okay? Do you need to head back to your cute little campsite and go and light yourself a little fire so you can at least eat? It's taking him till 3 p.m. to eat, you guys. 3 p.m. Oh, guys, he's now feeling very sad, depressed from his PTSD. Your sim is feeling rather down in the dumps. Try and distract your sim with something comforting. I don't know what you're going to find comforting out here, but why don't you go ahead and roast yourself a little fish, Abel? Then at least you can get some food in you. I, <laughs> I don't know if the outdoor life is for you. It says alien is seeing, like, Lilith try and be a little campster Rooney. She's just not going to be great at it. They're, they're, they're very much, like, safe, cuddled little city kids, aren't they, really? But at least he's... he's look, look at his little fish that he caught. Check him out. He's caught a fish and he's cooking it. I am proud of him. I am proud of our little cutesy being able. Okay, you've got to burn it if you don't start eating it soon, Abel. I'm just putting it out there. I really don't want you to accidentally burn the only fish you have. Also, don't let the fire go out because look at it. It's going down to a mere little whimper of a fire. Okay, he did it, guys. He cooked himself a fish. He cooked himself a fish. I'm so proud of him. He's so sad and he's feeling depressed at the moment, but I'm really glad that he's like cooked himself his own little fish. No, the fish is not cheering him up, you guys. I thought the fish might help, but I don't know if this whole wilderness thing is quite helping him out as much as he thought it was gonna. But I'm still very proud of our little Bean Rooney for cooking himself a beautiful piece of fish that he caught. Well done, Abel. I just wish it made you happier, honey. I just wish it did. Look, he's... Oh, oh guys. It's too sad. It's too sad. He's literally sat here in like the most beautiful place 
and he might as well just be sat back at home in his room because nothing is making this poor poor little bean feel better for himself he's also guys look at this he's lonely as well he doesn't feel like he can talk to anybody especially not his family right now but he is definitely definitely missing them and he's definitely feeling very lonely which is just too sad poor little Abe Laroonie and guys look at this he's feeling broken hearted as well and I mean it's not gonna be helping the fact that he's surrounded with mosquitoes he's just kind of sat here like this is my life now this was not really what I envisioned when I did my big grand gesture of running away from home oh and a hello woman that's just walked straight through my campsite thanks thanks love it looks like he's going through his phone and like debating should I talk to somebody? Should I at least let somebody know I'm here? But I don't think he has you guys. I think he's still just out here on his own. The thing is, he must be getting so many texts and like WhatsApps from everybody being like, where are you? And he's not replying to anyone, which is kind of bad because he should at least be letting people know he's safe. <gasps> and now guys, he's off to go cry in his tent. He's literally going to go cry in his tent. Abel, you're breaking my heart right now. Poor little angel. Listen, can you hear him? If I go in, I don't actually think I'll be able to see him. No, I can only see blackness. But he is in his tent having a little cry for himself. And he's going back in for another. It's getting pretty dark. Why don't you set up your little light so at least you can see around your, around your little camper? Can you not turn this on? Will this just generate light automatically? I'm kind of hoping it will. And his social is getting really, really low now, you guys. And the person who's actually at the top of his list to talk to is Erica. Who's his friend that will always be in there for a kind word. But even so, he just keeps coding and crying <laughs> over and over again, Abel. Yeah, I've asked him to catch some little fireflies. Yeah, see if that sweet. makes him feel a little bit better. He caught three fireflies, fair play to you. And now he's just kind of lying by himself. And he's cute, he's got, uh, it's a cute little campsite. I like the little ivy at the side here. But he's just watching the stars all on his own with nobody to talk to. Despite the fact that he's feeling really lonely. And look at this, he wants to call the sadness hotline. Okay, I think that is actually a good shout. Why don't you call the sadness hotline, Abel? Even if you're not getting help from at home, if you're feeling down and depressed and sad, you need to know that there's somebody you can talk to, okay? There we go, you guys. I've got him to speak to the sadness hotline. So at least there's somebody there talking to him, giving him a little bit of advice. Although I don't know how much it's helped the poor one. I do think he just needs to at least call somebody to check in and just say like, I'm alive, I'm okay. I'm just in a really, really bad place. But maybe not tell them where he is. Just kind of say, I'm out. I'm out in the sticks all alone. I'm feeling pretty down. And I'm hoping that this is going to help cure me, but I think I, I think I need some help. So when Abel has woken up the next morning, guess who is literally waiting outside his tent for him? It turns out it was actually Erica that Abel called yesterday because Erica is literally camping with her family as she told little Lily Bear just down there. She could tell straight away where he was when he was on the phone from the sounds of the wilderness around him and also she could tell that he definitely definitely needed help and although she's not been able to talk to Abel for a while because of the whole Connor thing she knew that she had to go over and help a little friendo Abel. And straight away, Abel seems like he's perked up a little bit. He's out of like that depressed mood. And he's he's at least got a little bit of a... There we go, that's the smile I was looking for. He's definitely got himself a little smile back on his face again, you guys. Which is what we wanted to see. He definitely seems like he called the right person to help him out. And we, of course, know that cute little Erica, look at her eyes, like, she's got such big, pretty eyes, has always been like this really nice sort of like calming influence on little Abel. But we also know that Erica and Connor had their first date last episode of In the Suburbs. And also, look, I feel like he's ripped all his clothes out here. Also uh, kissed each other for the first time. So this situation is actually a little bit of an awkward one right now. Because I guess she's going to have to tell him at some point that her and Connor went out on a date. And how this is going to affect... I don't know how you can cloud date gaze in the... In the ivy there little uh, little label but maybe hearing that she's dating connor 
is just gonna put him straight back in a little bit of a depressed mood. I don't know, you guys. So it's cool that little Erica can hang out with him because she is literally just camping down the road. But what is gonna happen when she inevitably has to tell him that she's been on a date with Connor or should she tell him at all? Is Abel ever gonna come home if he hears yet some more sad news, you guys? I don't know. I don't know what is gonna happen. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Should he just keep hanging out here with Erica until he feels happy enough to come home? And should he tell his family where he is? And whilst he clearly called Erica for her reason, he feels like he's got a really deep connection with her. Is... And actually, you know what? He also has no idea. Literally no idea that Connor has been out on a date with her. Why are you guys just staring at each other like that? You've been staring at each other like that? For quite a while now, you guys. Like, what? what is the deal? What's going on here? There we go. <laughs> now they're back to be their little selves again. Is is this still really wrong because she's dating Connor? Is the, is Sucker? It's like the one person that actually gets Abel out of his funk and out of feeling so down is also kind of the one person that he can't have. Guys, what do we do about this Abel situation? At least we found him and at least he's like alive and well. But now, what on earth are these guys gonna do? Should he keep hanging out with her until he feels happy enough to go home? Or should he just go home and try and deal with his emotions there? Guys, if you have some ideas, please let me know in the comments below. And let me know what you think we should do about the label and how we can get him back home again with the Villarreal family. I hope you guys have enjoyed this special episode of Broken Dream. If you have, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you guys in another episode. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!